What do you do when the sun turns wrong? When light, which once represented life, joy, and warmth, becomes a symbol of death and destruction? Do you hide inside? Shutter the windows, keep out the light by any means necessary? Do you retreat underground, where the sun's rays cannot penetrate, burrowing into the dark and the cold? Do you simply give yourself to it, accepting that there is no escaping something so vast, so far reaching as sunlight itself, and allow yourself to be lost in the end of all things? We've covered this possibility before, SCP-001, When Day Breaks, or SD Locke's proposal. It's difficult to know what any given person might do in such harrowing circumstances. After all, we have always learned to love the light and fear the darkness. It turns our very understanding of reality upside down to have that paradigm shifted, the dark becoming safety and the light becoming death. The source of all life on Earth, of all warmth, transforming in an instant from the sun as we know it to an Apollyon-class SCP that melts all living organisms that cross into its gaze. But what about a being that has always feared the light, something that prioritizes solitude and never ever wants to be seen? How might it live out those darkened days? Today we're taking a look at what happens when Daybreak meets a familiar face, even if a constantly hidden one. SCP-096 SCP-096, or the Shy Guy, is something of a celebrity around here. It is a humanoid creature with long distended arms, pale skin, and a jaw that can open four times wider than an ordinary human's. There is only one thing above all else that this entity desires, for no one to see its face. When someone views its face, it flies into an uncontrollable rage and seems to have no other option but to destroy the person who has seen it. So, it is unlikely that a creature so intent on solitude would be in much danger from the transformed sun. In fact, it might even be a positive thing, and for some time it was. With so many human beings gone, reduced to gelatinous masses with no desire but to slither around in the ghoulish sunlight and merge with one another, there were fewer people to observe his face than ever. He could stay inside and know with almost complete certainty that no one would come to bother him. No one was coming to look at him, and there were no more visitors, researchers poking and prodding that might sneak a look at his face. And so he stayed there, in the room that had served as his containment unit before the world turned upside down. The masses of flesh that once were humans did not concern him, as they never looked at his face. All he did was stay in his room and never go outside. The outside frightened him terribly, though he was not concerned with the deadly sunlight or the possibility of it melting him as it had so many others. He was much more afraid that someone, some unlikely survivor clinging to their original life, might look at him, that they might see his face. That was simply too distressing to risk. He would much rather stay alone in his old cell, weeping softly in the shadows. One day, though we couldn't say how many days after the end of things it had been, he was weeping alone in his former cell. The days blurred together, spent the same way, and time had lost much of its meaning. Through the echoing sound of his sobs and the sloshing sounds of the creatures outside, a woman's voice cut through. It was faint but he could make out what she was saying. She was calling out for help, asking if anyone had any food or fresh water. The sound was getting louder, closer, accompanied by the disconcerting thump of her footsteps. She was coming down the hall, as much as it could be called a hall anymore. She was coming towards his room to disrupt his miserable peace. He heard her steps cross the threshold of his room, and her voice broke into a terrified scream. No doubt at the unexpected sight of a pale, naked creature weeping in the corner of what she expected to be an empty room. Startled by the first loud sound he'd heard in a long time, in a world that had mostly been silent since the initial outpouring of agonized screams had faded into the soft slap of flesh and slime on the ground, he turned around. He shouldn't. Ordinarily, he wouldn't. But he couldn't stop himself. There he saw a woman. Wide eyes filled with tears, face streaked with dirt, a small child next to her holding her hand and clinging to her leg. Just as he saw the woman, 
She saw him. She saw his face. Anger boiled over inside of him, and he let out a scream, wild, primal, and filled with inhuman rage. She could not be looking at him, seeing his face. He couldn't let her. The woman ran with the child in tow, panicked by the wild roar and the sight of him standing upright before her. The anger faded as she left his sight, making her way down the hall into the stairs. But then he remembered. She had seen his face. He could not let her leave. It was time to do something he never thought he'd have to do again. Hunt. His heightened senses picked up the sound of muffled footsteps coming up through the floor below him. She was downstairs just beneath the floor where he was standing. His instincts kicked in, and his body moved almost of its own accord. He lifted his long, long arms above his head and drove his hands down into the floor. It was weakened by the ravages of the elements and time, and crumbled under his unnatural strength. He dug his claws into the plaster, tearing it apart and cracking it into pieces. He pushed his claws in deeper and deeper until he could feel them breaking through the other side. He pulled the floor apart until the hole was wide enough to fit through, then dropped down to the room below. He spotted the woman's back, fleeing through the door just as he landed. She was getting away. He tore after her, ripping through concrete and steel, destroying everything in his path in a mad dash for the object of his rage. He had to catch her. She could not be allowed to leave. She looked over her shoulder at him, her face a mask of pure terror. She knew, just as he knew, that there was no escape in sight. In his single-minded obsession and her desperation to escape from him, neither of them noticed that she had run so far and so carelessly that she was now outside the building. She had crossed from the shadows into the harsh light of the sun. The woman's eyes widened in grim understanding of her fate. He could only watch helplessly as her body began to succumb to the vicious rays. Almost instantly, she began to melt. As it was closest to the sun, her head was the first to go. Her nose drooped like hot wax, dripping as it went until it slumped off her face and landed on the ground with a sickening splash. Her eyes were next, popping out of their sockets and hanging loose and limp on her cheeks and dangling from sinewy strands. She tried in vain to stuff them back into place, but they squished in her hands like overripe fruit. She attempted to run into the comparative safety of the ruined building, but her feet were already beginning to spread out onto the street, melting into a sticky red smear on the pavement. Her legs crumbled beneath her, and she collapsed to the ground, her face leaving a trail of gelatinous flesh as it landed. She tried uselessly to drag herself along the ground back into the darkness, but her arms were melting into the dirt, mixing with it into a horrible red mud. She let out a last scream of agony, but the sound turned to a thick gurgle as her lips fused together and her mouth melted into nothingness. He watched it all, sobbing and roaring in frustration. She was gone, and he would never get the satisfaction of ending her. The infernal sun had stolen her from him. Now, she was nothing but a wet shadow, like the rest of the humans had become long ago. He heard the sound of a soft sob behind him, a tiny human voice. He turned, looking for the source. There was the little girl. He had almost forgotten about her. She was calling out for her mother and crying, and she was looking right at him, right at his face. He waited for the anger to overtake him, but instead, there was nothing. Why wasn't he angry? She was looking at his face, so why? Then he realized. Her eyes were on him, but she did not see him. She was blind. She approached the creature, her arms outstretched following the sound of his crying. She touched his hand with her own tiny fingers, so small and fragile, and asked, Mommy? Then he felt something he had never felt before. Tenderness. Care a desire to protect this tiny, innocent being. It was the first time he had ever felt warm, ever felt anything but sadness, anger, or fear. Overcome with this softness, he wrapped his arms around the child and hugged her close. She hugged him back tightly, and the room went quiet as they both stopped crying. From that day on, they became a family of sorts. They lived together and he took care of her, 
She didn't know what he looked like and had no idea he might be something to fear. To her, he was safety. He was home. For the first time in his long, awful life, he felt like a human instead of a monster. He would scavenge food for her, bring her fresh water, lay down stolen blankets and pillows so she would have a soft place to rest. He even found her a ratty, worn teddy bear amongst the rubble and gave it to her as a gift. She clutched it to her chest and thanked him, and for once his tears were those of joy. In this cursed world, they had found something like happiness in one another. He knew he would protect her, no matter what. Then one day, everything changed. The creature and the little girl were playing in the abandoned site, making up little games together, when he took a break to look out at the window and monitor their surroundings. Outside, the evil red sun waited. When he turned back, the little girl was gone. One of the shadowy creatures, once human, was imitating his voice to lure her away. He could hear it in the distance, and her tiny footsteps following it. He chased after her, the only thing he had ever loved, and saw her just as she stepped out into the light. She screamed as one of her arms began to melt in the light, and he knew what he had to do. He grabbed her and pulled her back inside, using his body to shield her from the horrible rays. As he wept over her, his tears stopped her body from melting any further, but his body continued to fall apart. It was too late for him. He ran as far as he could. Once he transformed, he did not want to end up hurting the girl. He ran until his legs melted away and he could not run anymore. He had reached the shoreline and stared out at the ocean, unable to move anymore. He screamed a final time in agony, in heartbreak, in mourning for the happiness he had finally found and now would lose. But at least he knew, as his eyes melted away and he was nearly gone, that the girl would be safe. And then he was gone and the world was quiet. Now go check out SCP-096 The Shy Guy and SCP-001 When Day Breaks for more on The Shy Guy and the SCP-001 proposal that turned the sun against all human life.